Hey, hello, and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are looking at a book from Kathy Norris. Thank you so much, Kathy, for giving away two books. There's going to be one for the winners and one for the states. If you're watching on replay, thank you so much for joining me today, and be sure and go to the link that we'll provide. It'll either be in the description, and I'm sure there'll be links down below that my admin will be adding. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to the live. As you show up. I'm so glad that you're here uh, today. Again, we're looking at this book. Um, we're actually, I'm actually going to do something different where I'm, um, <clears throat> I'm going to do a live uh, look through with the book and um, uh, answer questions as I can. Uh, I have talked to Kathy about a few things about the book and also I wanted to make sure and point out some things. If you already have the book, let us know uh, what you think. And uh, be sure and uh, let Leisure Arts know that you want more loom knitting books as I am sure they are happy uh, to keep uh, keep Kathy and wonderful designers like her going uh, as long as you're getting their books, right? Right? These are awesome. I'm so glad to see more and more loom knitting books out there. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sorry for my delay. Um, I couldn't even find my microphone this morning. We, um, we had tornadoes, uh, sirens going off <laughs> at 2 a.m. So that was fun. I'm really glad that I'm uh, nice and safe in my neighborhood and we had some, um, some, uh, stuff happen locally around here that, um, that is not good. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that everyone's safe. I, I've only heard of one injury so far. So, uh, anyway, I'm so glad to be here. I'm glad you're joining me. Um, hopefully, uh, everyone, uh, is going to refresh their page and join us. We're having a bit of a slow thing because I did start a couple of minutes late. Usually everybody's kind of waiting for me to start at nine. So if you're catching me on the replay and you want to catch me live, I start Monday and a uh, Monday and Wednesday live broadcast uh, at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. So you'll have to Google for your time zone. And then on Fridays, I launch a video on YouTube every Friday. And uh, if it happens to not be on my channel as a regular tutorial, it'll probably be me live. And if I'm live, it's usually 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. So you'll get a video from me on Friday. And I may release them on other days as well, but guaranteed on Friday. Okay, so we're going to go over this book today. Thank you guys for your well wishes. Uh, be sure and share the video and let others know that this is um, this is happening right now. Um, I'm seeing that there's not as much activity on uh, coming in as normal. And so um, I want to make sure that um, people know because um, I didn't start on time. <laughs> I'm sorry. So if you'll be if you'll be sure and share and you can share to the um, uh, group page for um, Good Knit Kisses. And uh, Good Knit Kisses Loom Knit and Craft Club. If you're not part of a member of that group, I uh, would love for you guys to join us. We have a private Facebook closed group of about 16 or 17,000 people, and uh, it's a great community there. Um, if you are hearing me today, give me some, uh, some hearts or love or something and let me know. <laughs> I'm having a bit of a Facebook lag here, and I just want to make sure people are on here before I really dive in and start. So, um, <clears throat> Thank you, Robin, for joining me. Um, Robin, congratulations. Uh, she won the... Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, I saw some of the comments from Chris. Thank you, Chris. Um, Robin won one of the giveaways for the Flower Loom Crochet Book and Loom. So congratulations, Robin. And I don't know if our other winners are going to join us, but it's up on the blog. So if you don't know, um, go check out the blog, and it's got all the winners listed. Hey, good morning, Bridget. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chris. Yes, she's she's like, okay, you didn't start in time, but I was worried. <laughs> hey, Joanne, good morning, good morning. Um, okay, so we've got, uh, thank you, Chris, for sharing. Yeah, and Joanne, if you're just sharing me with me, uh, I'm seeing this. I'm not having as many people jump on as quick as they normally do, so I'm a little concerned that maybe we need to share um, this page, uh, again <laughs> and let people know. Cause I really hate to start a live, um, review without, um, people here, uh, that wanted to see it. So, cause I'm just going to dive in and they're not going to know where I am. <laughs> so yeah, Chris, so cool. A regular viewer can win. Congrats, Robin. You know, and I recognized all of the winner's names and I know the names. And right now all I can think of is Robin cause I see her right now. <laughs> 
So I think they are all people who have joined on the live views, which are live broadcast, which is outstanding. So yeah, Chris, they may not think I'm broadcasting due to the storm. Yep. <laughs> I wish that I could, I wish that I could uh, post from my personal channel right now and say, I'm going live. I'm not sure that I can, let's see. No, I can add a comment, but I can't, um, I can't hit the share button. So, oh, well, <laughs> if any kind of, I don't know if Facebook will let you send to a group. If you're part of my group, be sure and share to that group. Okay, because I really want the Luminators to see this. Okay, so we're going to get started, and then I'll just share this later. All right, because it won't be relevant after today. <laughs> okay, so today we're looking at, I know this is reversed, but I'm, I'm going to flip the camera and show you. We're talking about the Luminate Samplers uh, book. This is from Kathy Norris, and it's put out by Leisure Arts. And um, I went ahead and tagged, this, tagged them in this video, so give them some love if you like them putting out books for loom knitting, um, all the different designers that they support there. And uh, if you'd like to see more, let them know. I'm sure that they would love to know. Hey, thanks, Joanne, for sharing to the group. I appreciate that. Thanks, April. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Robin. Um, so, okay, so I'm going to get started. So this is allowing you to create uh, textured afghans while learning the different stitches. Okay, so there is another book that she has out. It's a, it's a smaller, um, it's a smaller book that's, it's a, like a stitch dictionary. And, um, due to the storm, I didn't have time to prepare, but I couldn't grab her book. And anyway, it's all like shoved away. So anyway, her little stitch dictionary though has a ton of stitches. This is a really great book to accompany that one. Um, even though it's small, the other book is small, it's jam packed full. I do have a video review on YouTube for that. So if you wanna check that out, um, but this accompanies it really well. Um, is the book available in the stores? Um, I'm not sure if it's released in the stores yet, but I'm pretty sure it is. Leisure Arts does this special thing right here where they have this little tab here that says knit. And so you want to check because they don't actually uh, deem it as loom knit. And so um, when you're in the store and you see these little tabs that say knit, look at them. You know, the books tend to like move from spot to spot. <laughs> so I always know the leisure arts because they always have that little tab. So <laughs> um, that's how I know it. Um, oh, we have some more people hopping on. So glad. Hey, Carol. Hey, Patricia. Good morning. Good morning. Um, okay, so, oh, and Patricia's across the pond. Um, so we're going to have two winners. We're going to have one in the States and one international. You'll be able to enter at a link later that Joanne will provide. And that is to my blog where you can enter. I'm going to go ahead and give some of the giveaway information. I'll do it again later on in the broadcast. So you have um, a less than one week to enter. It ends at the end of Monday. So 11.59 p.m. Monday night, this coming Monday. And um, then we'll, we'll, we will announce the winners on Wednesday. Wednesday during the live broadcast so 9 a.m. Central Standard Time on Wednesday next week so that's what we're gonna do <laughs> so um, you've got what is that uh, <laughs> the fifth so we'll announce it on the fifth but it closes on the third at the end of the day so hey good morning Ellie I see you jumping in all right so I'm gonna look at this sampler and show you ah, let me move my tripod here All right, let me adjust to walk amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay, so this is the Luminate Samplers kit, uh, or not a kit, it's a Luminate Samplers book, and um, you're, you're making a sampler set of stitches, so when you're learning new stitches, this is a really great one to try. Um, not only does it show you the individual stitches, so it's not all like one big pattern of samplers, it shows you the different individual stitches so you can work up samples of those and then try your hand at a full sample or just work those uh, stitches as you go. So I would suggest studying all the stitches in the in the, the one you pick first. So let's kind of dive into this and, and look at it. It features 35 stitch patterns. That's pretty great, right? So, oh look, Kathy signed my book. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> so, um, Let's see. Oh, Christy, Christy Lee says, I love my Loom Knit books. Uh, the way I get them is Amazon. My Michael store doesn't carry a lot of the Loom books. Oh, Christy Lee, thank you for commenting. 
That's good to know. Ellie, oh good, your book sampler is coming. That's wonderful. And by the way, this is being sponsored by Kathy herself, so she'll be sending them out. I don't know. She might be signing them. So <laughs> so um, anyway, this this book is laid out. It's showing you some of the looms that they're using. Um, you, it's got the, It talks about the luminate samplers. It talks about planning your sampler. Now, if you're like me, you dive, you you skip some of the first pages because you want to get to the good stuff. You want to dive into all the pictures and all the the the, the stuff. Don't do that. Don't miss it. I, I know. Go ahead and look at the pretty pictures when you get it. But <laughs> really, really read this. Okay, just think about it as a regular book and read it cover to cover. And at least the first few pages because those are pretty critical and it gives them very good information. And um, yeah, Adam, I hope you win the international gift. Yeah, that would be amazing. Um, okay, so this is basically luminating afghans of any size. It's easy when you work in strips and any gauge loom. It's appropriate um, yarn weight. Choose from 35 patterns, uh, stitches, and three sampler options to create your own arrangement. So that's a gist of what they're saying here. Okay, so. They're talking about um, there's different arrangement types, and then they also talk about sizes here. So um, these are like a baby afghan, a lapgan, and a, a regular afghan. But this is there's no must on sizes, and they talk about this here. It what what type of loom you have and what yarn weight is appropriate. So if you don't know what appropriate weight is then you're going to look at your loom. So the, they've got it really nicely laid out here. So if you're if you're new to um, loom knitting, you may or may not know, but the measured distance between your pegs, like center peg to center peg, is, um, is, is this measurement that we're talking about on peg spacing. It's not this distance in between. It's from the middle of this peg to the middle of this peg. Another way to measure it, if you're using a soft measuring tape, you can go from the edge of this groove on the left to the left edge of this groove or whatever, and then you're gonna look um, in increments of sixteenths or eighths uh, to the nearest um, uh, nearest one. They're usually um, spaced out correctly like that. So um, half inch to nine sixteenths, um, and then they've got the metric uh, down below, and that's regular gauge, and then the yarn weight that goes along with that, and then large, and then extra large. So that's what's called out in here. And so it really spaces this out. It talks about choosing your yarn, and then choosing the loom to match your yarn weight. Okay, so you've picked your yarn, then you pick your loom, and then you're gonna make a stock and net stitch to gauge your swatch. And it talks about like, the different math that goes in that. Don't get scared. This is if you're trying to make a custom blanket. The thing is, is, um, and, and then she talks about the orientation of the strips. Like, so if you're making the strips like this, or if you're making the strips like this, or whatever you're doing. So it talks about that, and then it talks about the math of it. And, um, and then it keeps going and gives you examples on how to multiply this out. I did notice something, like when I read it, and I thought, I'm going to clarify this just in case you're like me and you can reinterpret something a few times. So there is a, um, there's a formula on here. And so I'm just going to read just a little bit and I can't reveal all the book, but this little part here, it says, um, so it's time for the math. Um, you take the number of stitches per inch and then you multiply it, the total number of inches you want for overall finished width, decide how many strips you want. And then you're going to um, add a stitch for each edge that will be woven together. Okay, so that's a general thing. But, like, if you're going to break it down and you don't know what that means, well, here, let's do an example. So her example in here is I want 49 inches wide, right? Forget about what the length is. I don't need to worry about that. But I want 49 inches wide, and I get X amount of stitches per inch. Okay, then I'm going to multiply that number out and then get um, like say it's two stitches per inch, then um, I'm gonna get times 49, I'm gonna get 98. Okay, so that's gonna be um, how many across um, I need, uh, how many pegs across that I need for that. And then you want to divide it into your five strips, but you would be wrong to do that because you need to add the extra stitch that they talked about in here, okay? So what you want to do is, um, it, I like to map it out like, the, like this is a cool way to do it. So I made a dark marker here, 
where I'm gonna have the seams joining together. And then this is one edge, right? So she said one for the pa every panels or every end. So I've got one here, but then where it's joining, I've got one here and then one here. So that's two here. So on these panels here, there's two stitches along here. So anyway, it, it teaches, it, she talks about how to get, um, how to get that right. And um, uh, anyway, so we've got two, four, six, uh, oh, I'm sorry. And you don't, you don't need an extra stitch here. You do the two, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Um, you do two stitches wherever they're going to be joined. Okay. So there's two extra stitches. So it's going to be two, four, six, eight. And when she writes it out, she says, if you want five strips, add six, uh, eight stitches. Okay. One for each of the two end strips and then two for the center strip. So this is an end. So it's one. And then this is a center, so it's two. So that's another way to think about it, okay? So I've got end, end, that's one, one, and then the center is two, four, six. So six plus two is eight. So anyway, that was just a quick rundown of that. But like you can see how like if you don't write it out, you might get a little confused. So I would take eight plus the 98 and I would get 106 stitches. So that's just an example of how they do that. And then she runs the math for you for an example. And then you choose the pattern stitches and then it goes through all the patterns. So this is if you're creating one and it shows you the multiple stitches you need for those and to not be so confusing. If you're totally new to this, the great part is, is you can pick the afghan that you want. Like say, I'm like, oh, I love this one here. It shows you what that's gonna look like when they use the patterns that they call out. So like, let's say, let's say I wanna do this lapkin. It tells me the finished size, it tells me it's easy. It tells me my shopping list, what yarn, what loom, the extra supplies, and then that gauge, remember they talked about the gauge swatch? So knit that up with your yarn and um, make sure that you get that um, or you're gonna have to make a change mathematically. And um, the, the um, excuse me, if you use the loom uh, with 50 pegs on it, the large straight like they pictured here, then you'll be able to achieve this. So we're working the individual strips and then like say strip one, it talks about which stitch to work, okay? So this particular one is one particular stitch the whole way. And then strip two, and, and oh, by the way, so it says work this stitch, granite stitch on page 16. So then what you do is go over to page that it calls out, you find the stitch, it gives you a picture, okay? And then it tells you the multiple of pegs. If you don't understand that at this time, that's okay. You don't need to because for the one for the pattern that's already lined out, you don't need to know that number. If if you've got the right loom and the right weight yarn, and then you just follow the pattern, you're not going to need to worry about this multiple right now. So you're going to work these rows repeating to make that, okay? And you make it for the length that it tells you, and then you work a chain one bind off across. So that's pretty simple, right? And you've got the first strip down. Then the next strip is going to work a different one and it tells you where to start and all that kind of stuff, okay? And how many pegs across and everything. So then I go to the next one and it works a different one. So it, this, this one's a real simple one. You work three simple stitches, right? And then um, one of the biggest questions before I move on is, um, what knit stitch is it? Okay, I'm gonna show you. Okay, the knit stitch that she used is the true knit stitch. If you don't know it and you're used to e-wrapping, let's just show it to you right now. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna get some yarn on the pegs. Forgive the noise that you may hear outside. I'm sure people are cleaning up from the storm last night. Get on 
I'll show you just a second. I just realized, you know what? I should show you guys what stitch to work. Well, that's a lot of noise outside. Okay, so let's work a purl stitch. I want to show you the purl stitch. Okay, so this is a purl stitch. Just to remind you, if you haven't done it before, you lay your yarn below and you lift it up and get that loop, right? Just like you're pulling a pearl out from the ocean and lift that old loop off and put the new loop on. Okay, so that's the purl stitch. You're gonna do the opposite for a knit stitch. You're gonna go above, above the peg, okay? We're going above uh, the loop on the peg and then we're gonna go under, grab that yarn, pull it and make a loop. And then this comes off and then we put the new one on, okay? So let's do that again. This is a purl, okay? Goes from the bottom and then the the knit, or the true knit, pulls it down. So we're gonna go down. And a way to remember that is it makes a V, okay? A knit stitch is shaped like a V. This will make a true knit or traditional knit stitch, okay? So there's that. Now, if you're used to um, e-wrapping, of course an e-wrap is run around like this. I don't remember seeing any e-wrap in this book, so as far as I know, there's none in here. Uh, there may be a yarn over that um, that does that. Um, the yarn over that yarn over might be holding in the front. I don't remember if it's an e wrap one or not. But um, if it's yarn over, it doesn't cause an e wrap. You may just be holding it simply in uh, front of the peg. So that would be that. Uh, I'm gonna go through and see if I have any questions before I move on. Let's see, do you know what stitches in the book are the same or different than the ones in her other book? She has new stitches in here. The true knit makes it real tight. Um, Angie, actually no, um, a flat knit makes it tight, but it looks similar to a true knit. A flat knit is gonna go over the front like this, and you're gonna lift from the bottom over the top. That's less yarn inside that stitch. Now, if I want to put more yarn inside that stitch, I'm going to hold my, um, I'm going to hold my strand to the back, but go all the way around to make a U. And that's going to be a unit stitch. And so I'm going to lift all the way over. And so you see how there's more yarn that's being trapped up in that stitch. And when I come back over here and I want to work uh, another stitch, I go and do this and make another U stitch. However, if you choose to go like this and then that, you're definitely gonna get a tighter stitch than when we did the true knit. So you wanna be consistent about whatever stitch that you decide to do, but the ones in the book, I did ask her and she personally said true knit and that is why I'm showing that to you today. No, this loom is not specified in the um, in the book. However, the one that I'm showing here, this is a uh, this is a 28 inch um, ex pe with peg extender from uh, Knitting Board. It's got like 165 pegs, and it is seven sixteenths. Okay, uh, the seven sixteenths is actually going to fall um, right under this regular gauge, so it's right on the edge of being in the regular gauge. You may be able, if you're a, a loose knitter, um, you could probably use it for um, for any of the ones that call for a regular loom, so that would be okay. But it is in the small gauge, technically at the top end of the small gauge category. So if you have this loom, then there you go. Um, let's see, other thing I wanted to point out, isn't that pretty? Isn't that a nice sampler? 
And that doesn't look like a, a sample one. You know, sometimes you look at these sample afghans and they're just like a patchwork. But this is a beautiful lapgan. Okay, this is a this is a beautiful piece that you can give to anyone. And if you decide you make it across that big and maybe you're like, no, I just want to make a square. I mean, you can stop at whatever length you want. Just make sure all your strips are the same. Uh, let's see. Hey, thanks for sharing the video, Jackie. Good morning, Gayla. Okay. Sorry, I'm uh, scrolling through. Angie, yeah, yarn over. That's uh, I've got videos that cover that. Um, let's see. Oh, you're welcome for the clarity, Angie. Uh, Angie. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm just. Okay, I'm so glad. Thanks, Heather. Um, I'm glad that, that showing that helped you guys. Okay, I just want to make sure I had any questions that I wasn't ignoring before I, I move on. I know that other people later would probably appreciate it too. Look at this cute baby baby gan. Look at that. Isn't that sweet? So this is going to be more of that patchwork look. Of course, now you're going to work um, alternating colors on here to get this look. But there's going to be such a good texturing here, which would be really great for babies because they like to experience the different textures, right? And even like laying that on the ground. I remember um, I, I remember my, my kids, I, I would lay down uh, blankets of different textures for them when they're babies and just let them kind of play with it. So that was that was good, what do they call it, tummy time. <laughs> so, um, but this baby gan, it talks about the different strips uh, that you need. It gives a um, placement diagram and everything. And then it even has some um, tips and hints for um, adding the I-cord edging. And um, it's really great. So this shows this patchwork here. And then of course, when you need um, the different um, the different, uh, uh, like say like this one here, it'll tell you where to go. So like it refers a lot to different pages in the back for reference. But like I said, you could just open this up and just use it completely for a stitch dictionary. So, I mean, it's got 35 in here. So like say you just pick this woven stitch, then you could work the woven stitch and work the stitch patterning across. There are some cables in here. Um, I'm not seeing it right now and then it's got a large um, afghan here uh, look at that one that's the one that's on the cover and then it talks about the um, the layout here and the placement diagram is more involved now you're like oh my gosh but what happens if I choose different colors or what if what if I want to like color it up and see what it looks like or what if I want to plan out different sizes or whatever hey I got it for you right here she's got it let me go to it Look at this. There's worksheets in the back. So after like the general instruction page, they have these worksheets and um, you can you can plan it out and you can print them off with permission. It says Leisure Arts grants the owner of this book permission to copy the page for personal use only. So when you get this book, you can copy this page and put it with your project and write your yarn, your loom, your gauge, their finished size. And then you can even hold on and keep this with your record so you're like, You've got a picture, you can even attach to it and say, man, I made that for Angela's baby and I wanna make that again, you know, then then do that. So there's, there's ones for each of them, you know, and you can plan out, even if you use multiple yarns or multiple colors, you could write what color was on it and then note mark up your book. Just use this one for photocopying for your personal use. Personal use is you personally, not like, you know, a friend. <laughs> the friend needs to get their own book, I'm just gonna say. Um, all these different little patterns here, it, it lays them out, what the multiples are, it gives you a picture. It's, it's kind of dark on it here. It is a little lighter in person, so you, you can see the stitches. Um, I can't show you everything, so I want to make sure that I'm um, not violating anything by showing you every single thing. The other thing that they have is, let's see, what else? What else I want to show you? Uh, of course, it's got the general information and everything, but it also works through... Um, uh, the stitches, the cables, and so if you need some step-by-step -step instructions for cables, that's in there. And there's um, three different ones, uh, let's see, no, six different ones, uh, six different cables. And they're really pretty. Like, let's look at some of these cables that you'll see. Look at that. Aren't these pretty? 
So this is it, but then the reverse. And then that. Isn't that gorgeous? Pretty, right? I love that. I love that look. And so you can make up your own pattern um, if you like to experiment and put different things together. Like some people like to take a couple of different patterns and break them, uh, you know, break them up and put them together. Um, and so you could work your own stitch pattern here. But like I said, it it talks about how, like this one talks about if you want to make a panel, you're going to need it 14 pegs wide in order to create this. Um, they, they, the different panels require different um, widths to make it. So like this would be like, let's say you want to do... Um, maybe you find one of these stitch patterns in the book and you want to create a main afghan and then you're like but I want to put this cable along the side okay well you can do that you'll you'll um, have your main stitch pattern that you've got however many stitches across you're gonna do and then you're gonna have a panel that's however many stitches it calls out and then another panel here and then whatever end uh, treatment that you want or that could be the end treatment so then you then you would need the total stitches to make your entire afghan and then you just knit to the same length um, you can do them all at the same time or you could stitch them together and join so um, Angie no this is not for the serenity loom but you know if it's the right gauge and has the right amount of pegs you can use any pattern um, it's the Serenity looms or S looms are ones that um, you need to really um, uh, just pay attention to your gauge and how many uh, pegs you have because you really are nearly unlimited on um, what you can make on those and don't simply look for loom knit patterns that just feature an S loom because there's way more out there for you. You're limiting yourself if you only look for Serenity loom patterns. So, uh, let's see, who else, do we have any other? <laughs> Ellie says I use our credit card points when I bought on Amazon. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Thank you for the link, Joanne. So, yeah, you love the project pages, Robin? Um, oh, sweet, y'all. Okay, so, Kasid, um, you probably saw now that you can get it on Amazon. There is a, a link. Um, <clears throat> Joanne, you love the edging? Awesome. Um, yeah, so we have a link to the book. There's a link to the giveaway. Um, we are doing the giveaway. You can get one. We're giving away one for the States and one internationally. And um, Kathy is giving them herself. And you will, um, you'll enter. And then Monday, end of the day, well, um, 11.59, Monday Central Standard Time, um, or basically at midnight for Tuesday is when the contest ends or the giveaway ends and then I will announce it on Wednesday next week. So a week from today, I will announce the winner. So this is a shorter contest than we just had. We had a really long contest. Now we're doing a very short one. So um, I, can, I keep saying contest. It's not a contest. It's just an absolute giveaway. And um, Kathy is mailing this herself. So um, anyway, get your entries in. Um, I hope that I have Yes, I'm ready for the giveaway link. Thank you, Joanne. She now has the giveaway link in the um, in the comments. Be sure and click on Joanne's link there. I hope that I have um, uh, I hope I've helped clarify. Let's see. Ask me any other questions if you want me to look it up. Uh, Carol says she was trying to decide if she was going to buy the book. Um, my review has helped her make the decision. A definite purchase. Oh, thanks, Carol. Yeah. Um, definitely, I think it really would accompany well the other books she has, and I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me right now, but there is a smaller size. It's like a, anyway, I forget what size that's called, but anyway, there's a smaller um, loom knit stitch dictionary that she has that would accompany this very well because of all that she's, they've carefully lined out in planning your sampler. So you can plan your own or make one of the three patterns that are in here. They're not really limited here because like, let's say you're like, um, let, let, here, let me just talk a little bit more about it here. Let's say in this lap gown, it has the granite stitch, right? So it's on page 16. So I go to page 16 and I look at this, this one here and I'm like, ah, I'm not sure if I want that one. Maybe I want to substitute it, right? Okay, great. So let's find the granite stitch first. First order of business, find granite stitch. Okay. Granite stitch, multiple, 
is odd number of pegs. Huh, okay. So I wanna find a stitch pattern that's an odd number of pegs and I can do the same thing. So let's just, I'm just trying to make it real easy here. I'm not doing any math. I'm not doing anything crazy, okay? None of it's really crazy, but like let's let's look. Okay, so double garter rib, uh, rib. Okay, she's got a multiple of four pegs. That's not an odd number of pegs. And so I'm going to continue down until I find something that's an odd number of pegs. Maybe I want this garter rib, which is a multiple of three pegs. Um, you know, as long as I multiply whatever the stitch um, width is. Okay, 27. That's an odd number, so that would work. Um, so. As long as it will multiply out to be an odd number, I can use it. Um, uh, this one right here is seersucker, and so if I wanted to use this, it's a multiple of four plus three. When you see a multiple like this, let me just explain the multiples. Okay, so let's, for example, let's, let's say I have four, let's I'm zoom in here, multiple, oops. I can't even, I can't even write. <laughs> Let's do it here on a lined edge. Multiple of four plus three. Okay, so if I want to, um, if I want to make something that's three stitch patterns wide, okay, so I'm going to have one stitch pattern, two, three, so I'm going to have four, four, four plus three, okay, so I'm going to have Four, let me just make it easy and uh, let, me, let me make it different so I have a different number. So I have, maybe I want have four repeats, okay, of this pattern. So I've got one, two, three, four times the multiple number, okay. So I'm going to do four times four is sixteen, yeah, plus three, okay. So I have nineteen stitches, okay. Now, I know that's not what the width is on that other one, but let's get a little closer. If I added another repeat of four, okay, then I'm gonna get um, uh, 23 stitches, right? Add another four, and I'm gonna get 27. Well, I needed 27 for that, right? So I'm gonna need, I'm gonna have um, four, five, six. I'm gonna have six pattern repeats plus that three, right? So that's one way that you can kind of work at that and you'll know how many repeats of this thing that you saw that you liked. Say you're like, I want the edging to look like this. Well, I'm gonna see four of these repeats across. Cool, right? Or, or six of the repeats across. So like one, two, three, four, five. I'm actually gonna see one more than I see here. So my pat, it's gonna look very similar to what I see here, right? Does, is that helpful for you? If my weird math, <laughs> that's not how I normally do it. I just broke it out in a little bit different way to maybe help somebody today. So um, let's see. The dictionary is a five by eight size. Oh, thank you, Ellie. Um, let's see. Did she say to do the instruction on the oval loom? Um, there, there are some looms that call for it. The oh, okay, so these these looms here, she's calling out the oval loom is apparently a regular gauge. This, this loom is actually one that I don't I don't have. I don't really have the need for it. So, but this one is available. It's it's also a Leisure Arts loom. So if you were buying from Leisure Arts website, you could probably buy the Leisure Arts um, loom and the book at the same time. Um, so that's regular gauge is the oval loom. And then you've got the extra large gauge. This is a boy, um, looks like it's a 40 peg loom. And then this is um, the large gauge. This is a, a boy loom, which is a large, I think they said as a 50 peg. So any one of these looms would work for you or a similar brand that gives you a similar result. Okay. And then what else? Let's see. Do I have any other questions? Okay, um, Mary, uh, Marie, I'm not um, actually chatting about crochet today, but um, I do have some suggestions on my YouTube channel, um, uh, some different uh, crochet alongs that are, uh, they, they're pretty easy. Um, and then I've got some uh, other intermediate ones. So I hope that's helped you today. Again, um, you're going to want to um, go ahead and uh, click on the link 
that we have a, uh, below or we've got it in the description uh, for the main part of the video and uh, you'll be able to enter the drawing to get um, <clears throat> a book, one for the states and then there'll be one internationally and of course you can uh, go ahead and get it and if you get the extra one, you got the extra one and give it away for a friend, whatever. <laughs> it's awesome. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Ah, <laughs> I'm blown out here. Anyway, um, I hope that has been helpful for you guys. I'm trying not to look so blown out crazy. Am I <laughs> lighting here? Uh, let's see. Am I going to show some on YouTube? Kasid says. No, I'm, I don't have permissions unless she asks me to show um, any one of these stitches or something. Unless Leisure Arts did, because it would have to have, I would have to have permission from Leisure Arts. And so they would need to ask me to do that. I have done some of that stuff before, but um, for this particular book, I can guarantee you I would not be making a full sampler even if they did ask me to. So, um, yeah. <laughs> but the techniques for all the different um, stitches that you need to know, um, the true knit stitch, the purl stitch I actually showed earlier in the video. Um, I'm just looking across uh, for any, um, any other stitches that you may need. Um, I'm not even seeing any really super complicated ones. I mean, I, I don't think I saw anything and uh, you know, unless you're talking about, um, uh, cables. So the cables are the only ones that are really going to be moving stitches. And then they actually go through all of them. Uh, they go through, sorry, I'm looking at the book right now. Um, these are really pretty great because they're, I mean, if you're, especially if you're new, um, and that's the intent is because you want a beginner to be able to like learn and grow with this and, um, get it like getting this book would really help a beginner. Um, because every single one of these is a series of knit and purl stitches. And so if you want some pl help planning, um, and learning, this is a great way to do it. Uh, really. Um, so let's see. Um, Alicia, no, Tuesday is not loom a day anymore. Um, Mondays I'm still doing Q and A's and then Wednesday is, um, we'll be talking about loom knitting needles or um, yarn or crochet. Um, today we're talking about this book and it, this is sponsored, well, the books are sponsored and she gave me this book in full disclosure. I'm not being paid for this. Um, I don't do, I don't ever do any paid reviews um, at all and I don't do paid giveaways <laughs> unless, unless I need uh, help with uh, uh, money to, to, to mail it out, but usually um, they'll either mail it for me or whatever. So <laughs> I don't do that. Um, but um, when I decided to take off Tuesdays and Thursdays um, from the live broadcast because I couldn't get any videos done. I couldn't get anything really made and it was bogging my schedule down. And so I just um, slimmed it up to Monday and Wednesday, uh, the live broadcast. So uh, anyway, I'm glad that you guys joined me today. Um, uh, this, is, this is really great. Um, if you have someone who's been wanting to try out looms and doesn't want to make, um, just stick with e-wrapping, <laughs> dive into this. Uh, yeah, dive into it. it. It's a really great, it's a really great tool. I mean, I'm not just, I'm not blowing smoke or anything. This is, this is, it's a good book to have. So anyway, I thank you guys so much for joining me. Be sure and click on the blog for the giveaway. There'll be a link to purchase, but also a link to enter the giveaway and you can just get it all done in one fell swoop. I hope you have a great day. We will see you soon. We'll have a video coming out this Friday on YouTube and uh, one every Friday. So be sure and subscribe. Go to youtube.com slash goodknitkisses and click on subscribe. Hit the little bell icon so you get the notifications when I go live and, uh, and then I do giveaways and, and also um, let you know what's going on. So I love you all. Have a great day and happy knitting and crochet. Bye.